Hey guys, and welcome to how to paint a custom scheme on an Adeptus Custodes Captain for Warhammer 40k. Okay, well as of today, uh, Warhammer 40k 10th edition is out, and I thought it would be a great idea to do a video commemorating that, and an updated how to paint video for my custom scheme on my Custodes, as I've done one on the Warden uh, and the Blue Steel scheme, but I haven't done one on the Captain and one where the, the flesh is showing, so no helmet. So I thought that'd be a really great one to do, just to complement those other videos, and obviously the one on the Power Axe as well, uh, on, on Trojan. And uh, yeah, just a, a nice one to update and give you an, a, a fresh format for this uh, to go along with those. So I thought that'd be really cool. So we're gonna go through and do that, go through all that blue steel uh, color that I like to do, a lot of the glazing. So we've got the shade colors there, uh, the Vallejo uh, blue steel and the and the silver, the uh, Stormhost silver as well from GW. And, and just go through all that once more uh, to give you a fresh video. It's looking exciting. Ten edition is really cool. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Combat Patrol and we'll definitely do some videos on that. Uh, you know, I'm sure most uh, clubs and groups, gaming groups, are looking forward to a little bit of that combat patrol. It's a good format. I think it'll it'll work really well as long as they can balance them out. It should be really fun. But I won't go on that, on, on waffling on on that uh, topic here. We're here to paint a custody, so uh, let's get into it, eh? Okay, so to begin with, I thought I'd bring you in live so we can go through mixing that color together. So um, we've got our Vallejo colors here, the, the Arctic blue and the steel, and we're now going to mix them up. Not quite in a 50-50, but we're going to get somewhere close to that, a, a mid-level a mid sort of steel blue color. Uh, this is a quite dark, so you don't want to put that straight on. And we're going to be doing a lot of uh, glazing over the top with, with uh, the shade colors. So that's also going to deepen the color as well. So we don't want to go too dark to begin with. So we're going a little lighter than we maybe normally go uh, for the color we actually want. So we just get a little bit of this blue and put it across. Now bear in mind these are quite watered down. They're designed for uh, airbrush uh, paints, so um, for, for putting through an airbrush. So um, you don't need to add any water to this. It's already diluted enough as it is. Just make sure you give them a good shake. So then we get some of this silver here and we just put it in and we, st we start mixing to see where the color is going to go. So that's probably a little bit a little bit bright there. We want a little bit more of the blue in and we're just trying to get a mid-tone color, something uh, bright enough but 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 still maintaining uh, the blue tone. So something along those lines is roughly where we're going. So as you can see it's quite quite simple process just adding a little bit of each uh, and just playing with it until you get a color that you feel is roughly uh, in line with with, with, it, with where you want. Now there's no exact science to this, you can make it a little darker, a little bit brighter. It's all going to come together pretty much at the end because we're going to be adding silver highlights, as I said, a lot of those dark colors into the shadows and so on. So you're going to get a little, a little bit of variation across each of the models, but that's actually a nice thing. It's a very freeing thing and allows you to just uh, paint quickly without really worrying too much about uh, sort of a an overall consistency because you will see a consistency across the board once you see the the army together you're not going to notice those very subtle differences so we're ready to go now so let's get into the the base coating and we'll, we'll begin this process all right so the first step is the base coat so with that blue and silver mix we've just made we're going to now uh, base coat the model uh, with that steel and uh, just getting everywhere you'll find that this flows really well the Vallejo color is a really nice one for this so it, it, the coverage is really good and so you're just going to go through and hit all, all the all the armored areas uh, you'll see in, in, in my case I'm ignoring a lot of the the smaller details and just doing them in the same blue steel but it's up to you on, on how much you want to vary the, the details on the armor so once that's down uh, then we move into the shading step so with this we've got that nightshade blue shade from GW and we're gonna uh, thin that down using the Lamia medium uh, not water and uh, get that into a sort of a glaze consistency and then we're just uh, painting that in directionally not like a, a full cover wash we're sort of uh, placing it where we want so we want to see more shadows uh, in the in the grooves between the armor panels etc and just building up a shadow across that across that armor so we start to get some definition and once that's down then we move into the base coloring for the metal and the brass steps so I'm um, using the the lead belcher and the rune lord brass and just painting out all those areas that you want to see metal and that you want to see brass just to vary up the armor and that'll give us a, a good result and so once all that's sorted out 
Then we'll be moving into uh, the washes. So again, we've got the sepia wash and we've got the null and oil, and they go in uh, in sequential steps. So um, again, for, for diluting this, we're not going straight from the pot, we're using the Lamia medium, and we're um, diluting it that way. The reason for this is that the shade colors have a lot of white in them, and if you dilute them with water, you often get a lot of white residue when it dries. So the, the Lamia medium uh, suspends the pigments inside the shade and keeps it uh, stable, so it dries uh, the way you want. So once all that's down, now we're moving on to uh, the real nuts and bolts of this particular uh, technique. So uh, we're now going to be dry brushing uh, a, uh, or a directional dry brush with silver over the top. And so that's the reason why we went ahead and did all the other metal areas, because now we can do the whole model with this. So you want sort of a, a wedge shaped brush or something that you can be a bit more directional. And we're doing a, 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 not, a not a heavy coverage of silver, but a, we just want to hit those edges and bring a bit of uh, life back to uh, the, the armor and, and give it a bit of uh, a bit of sparkle so uh, just dry brushing across that and give us a little bit of silver and then once that's down uh, now we come into these color glazing steps uh, for anyone that's seen this on my channel I do it a lot so uh, the beginning uh, part of this is the purple glaze so we're just going to be uh, diluting that purple uh, shade down quite a lot with the Lamia medium quite transparent and we're going to directionally just add this uh, to the areas that we really want to see uh, some purple shadows so you don't necessarily have to do it everywhere but we're just trying to build in some depth and so once you've got that sorted out then we move into the magenta and the magenta is using even less so we want to see blue purple and reds across the armor so you're just directing it into the areas that you think will look cool uh, you know you think about uh, when when metal is heated or when copper or, or brass or any of those sort of um, uh, metals are heated you get a lot of discoloration of different different rainbow effects of color and that's kind of the, the approach we're doing here so we just want to see that built up and then once we've got that down then we're moving into color glazing the brass and so it's it's the reversed uh, step of that so instead we begin with uh, the magenta and we move through the purple and the blue but the same thing we want to heavily dilute it down with the Lamia medium keep it quite transparent and build it up in layers so you're building a color map across those, those surfaces and getting something really interesting and that's that's kind of the point here and then once we've got all of that sorted out then we're moving into the final stage, which is possibly the most important. And this is uh, to line edge highlight with the, the Stormhost silver or a similar silver uh, to bring back the shine because all of these glaze steps and all these shade colors are slowly matting out the surface and, and removing a lot of the metal shine. And so we wanna, we wanna see a little bit more of that come back and get some sharper edge highlights. We've got that soft dry brush that we, we've done in the previous steps, but we wanna see now a, a sharper edge highlight across the, the main forms. You don't have do it everywhere that's why we've done that dry brush earlier so we've got those two different sorts of uh, contrasts going on soft uh, edge highlights and now hard edge highlights and this will give us a really nice uh, finish for that armor so before we move on to the black robes and the rest of the figure, we want to get down that base because uh, doing that later on is going to cause a few problems with the paint probably uh, ending up onto the onto the robes, which, which we don't want. So, uh, or unless if you do want that sort of weathering effect, you want to do that at the end. So you'll see me come through now and just do my basing as I usually do. I, I like a, a sort of a gray ashen sort of base and you'll see me build up through dark grays up into light sort of off, off white grays, uh, just dry brushing over the top of that necromancer cloak. And uh, then once that's all dry, I usually go through with a combination of sepia uh, shade and the green shade and the Biltan and I'll use the Lamy Medium and do a kind of mix of greens and browns and sort of dot it around the greys to give a sort of staining effect so you get this sort of muddy browny greenish sort of ashen base and so I'll go through and do that uh, and then once that's all down then I'll come back in and we begin with the uh, the Abaddon Black and uh, re-black out all of the surfaces that are going to be black so that's the cloth uh, the, the the sort of the weapon casing uh, any of those areas where we're going to be doing uh, black highlighting up through greys so uh, we get all that that sorted out and then we can move on to the actual highlighting steps 
So now it's time to highlight the black. So we've set up that gradient there going through from that dark necromancer cloak mixed with black all the way up through to an off-white. And so we're going to begin with that necromancer cloak mixed with black and begin um, putting in our broadest highlights across the cloth, uh, just moving around, hitting those main areas, those main fold lines in the cloth and giving us a base to work from. And once we've got that down, then we'll move into the necromancer cloak. And this is our real base highlight color. So we're going to be not just uh, highlighting the cloth, with this one we're going to also be hitting the uh, the gun casing on, on the weapon and down the, the shaft of that weapon uh, hitting all the highlights there as well so you just move through you can use a standard brush here you don't need to go down to a fine detail brush yet this, these lines are relatively wide and as we move up this this scale of, of color into into the brighter tones we're going to be getting uh, thinner and thinner with our lines so you get into a very sharp line at the end uh, so once we've got that down now, now we move into our necromancer cloak mixed with dungeon gray and this is a, a, a sort of a the first time you're going to see your lines really show up so you want to be extra careful here you might move down a down a brush at, at this stage and you're going to start hitting the main lines on, on the cloth and, and the weapon etc and move through and try to get some establish some good light there and once we've got that down then we move into our uh, our sort of our mid-tone range of, of colors and so we've got our, our dungeon gray straight there and we're going to start to hit uh, those lines again and you might be leaving a little tiny bit here uh, in certain areas and hitting the the main edges across the top to simulate the light starting to hit that surface so once we've got all that sorted out then we might want to move on to that uniform gray and that uniform gray is now where we're going to be uh, being more selective about how how much we highlight of those lines so hitting the tops of the line and then coming down where you've got curves etc and you're hitting the centers of those curves or on the top the top edge it, simulating the sort of light hitting the surface uh, from above and that's what you're trying to do so we just go through and we start hitting all the all those lines both on the weapon and on the cloth and uh, once we've sorted that out now we're moving into the final stages of highlight, and this is where you're going to see the biggest contrast. And so we want a really fine detail brush for this, and you're going to start with that uniform uh, gray mixed with white. And this is not quite a spot highlight, but we're only hitting sort of the, the, the smaller section of each of those lines across the top. You'll see me come through and do that. I'm going to be hitting, um, you know, the, the curve where the, fold, the folds and the robes are, etc., sort of as, as if the light is hitting that spot and giving you a, a hot spot. And so once that's all sorted, it out then we'll move into that uh, next one up which is even more white added in and this is almost an off-white and this one's going to be almost a spot color as well we're just hitting the very edges the very corners of things uh, the very tops of the cloth etc to give us a really bright finish with the handle of the weapons, I've opted for a purple. So we've got royal purple here from Vallejo, and I've set up a little gradient. So from uh, the purple, mixed, then mixed with white for a mid-tone, and then a highlight step. So just very simple, and just going through and painting out uh, those handles, uh, the various little, little bits on the weapons uh, with the purple, uh, building up from one to the next, very simply, just highlighting up. And then uh, going to the next stage after that, and um, adding in a Magus purple contrast mixed with mixed with the, the contrast medium uh, as a kind of glaze or wash over that and I also include then the gun casing and and down the shaft of the weapon so and if I was doing uh, any other uh, custodies here I would also be tinting with that with that magus purple uh, the black areas on the shoulder pads if, if that if they were visible on, on the captain it's not but on the other ones I would do that and so you get a sort of a, a slight lavender purple uh, tint to the, those black areas just to push them away from where the where the rest of the armor and the the other black areas are to give you a different a different look and then finally uh, coming in with that satin varnish from Vallejo and uh, giving the the gun casings uh, those areas uh, are, are sort of a satin varnish just to give a different material quality to the other areas on the model and it just adds a bit of interest overall with the power axe it's into the magenta tones and deep reds and so we're using mephiston red mixed with black to start with and painting in uh, the the facings of that of that axe head and uh, just getting a, a good base to work from and from there we move up through the tones. so slowly mixing in white as we go so the next one up uh, being mephiston red uh, and you're doing a sort of feathering motion as you'll see me do it uh, across from the edge of the the blade uh, you know and flicking outwards and you'll get this sort of uh, 
sort of a feathered look down down the side of the the edge of the blade. And this is an aesthetic choice. You don't have to necessarily do it this way, but it helps blend it out uh, to that edge. And we're building up uh, successively lighter and lighter. So then the Mephiston uh, red with white is our first main uh, line edge highlight, and you're hitting all the edges of the weapon uh, and and going around to really delineate the different facings on there. And then finally, we're moving into Mephiston with white, uh, more white, and this is where you're getting a more sharp highlight, so a fine detail brush, hitting those main points uh, where, where, the, where the edges meet, etc., uh, feathering it out, and so on. And then finally, uh, two stages of, of really a spot highlight where we're mixing more white in again, and that's really just to really get that hot spot, because this is a power weapon, you want it to sort of uh, shine a little bit, so you want those little edges, uh, anywhere where, where corners meet, etc., to be really bright and white hot, so we, we, we know that it's, that it's on, that it's a power weapon, right? That's what you want. Skin tones are always hard, and so here I've set up a really simple gradient to uh, build in some, some very simple skin tones uh, to, to practice on. And so Bugman's Glow, Cadian Flesh, the Kislev Flesh, and White to build up through that. So the Bugman's Glow is the first one, that's the deepest color, and we're just going to base that, that skin and uh, get it ready for the next stages. And so you'll see me come in with that Cadian Flesh. Uh, it's influenced a little bit from the Bugman's Glow before, and that's really our base layer for the, for the flesh tone. Leave the Bubman's Glow as, um, you know, sort of like a shadow in, in, in the very deepest parts of the face, but mostly using the Cadian, and then moving up through uh, the Kislev mixed in with the Cadian as our kind of mid-tone, and now we're starting to leave areas to shadow it and so on, and then moving up through the Kislev flesh as a highlight color. You'll need a fine detail brush for this. It's a very slow process, just picking out those edges and, and giving a bit of light to the face, remembering that the sun is hitting from above, and so you're getting most of the lighter tones on on the top faces of the of the face, so around the T section, the the forehead, uh, across the top of the cheekbones, etc., and moving up through those successive layers of white mixed in with Kislev flesh to give you those final spot highlights across the eyebrows, etc. Just the main points. You don't have to be excessive with it, uh, just to get the the flesh tone down and get it looking and reading correctly. And there we go, a custom scheme on a custodies. Let's take a look. So yeah, this comes up really cool. You know, they, these are colors that I really enjoy and, uh, you know, the magentas and the blue and so on. The only thing missing from this is uh, blue-greens, which is an, another favorite of mine if you've seen anything else on the channel. But um, yeah, it should be really cool. I'm really looking forward to getting into some uh, Combat Patrol in 10th edition. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. I'll leave a nice image for him at the end so you can take a look in the paint list as I normally do. But I hope you enjoyed this. Please hit the like button, subscribe button. It really helps me out. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.